Siblings in Christ, come together for the family reunion, for the Holy One has brought us together. From far and near, we gather to wait for the big arrival, the birth of God's Son. Do we wait with our eyes downward, with our spirits low, our hearts sad? We wait in joyful expectation for Emmanuel, God with us. Let every heart prepare him room. Siblings in Christ, come together for the family reunion, for the Holy One has brought us together. Let the babies joy in God's presence. Let the children lead the way. Come, let us worship. Emmanuel, God with us, day spring of joy, 
You made your presence known when Elizabeth and Mary came together as expectant mothers. And you make your presence known today. Your spirit dwells in the electric joy passing between us. And when we come together in every greeting, in every kind word, in every reunion of the saints, meet us where we are in our despair of sadness, grief, or sorrow and surround our pain with never-ceasing joy. May we find space for both joy and sorrow in our communal experience, in our family reunion. Amen. Now we have the gathering song, Prepare the Royal Highway, number 264, and we'll sing all four verses. Into a hopeless world, Emmanuel will be born, God with us, hope for all. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Today, we light the candle of hope, because in God's presence, we find hope.
Into a violent world, Emmanuel will be, will be born, God with us, Prince of Peace, and the Prince of Peace tells us when we become peacemakers, we will be called children of God. Today we light the candle of peace, because in God's presence we find peace. Into a sorrowful world, Emmanuel will be born, God with us, day spring of joy. This is good news of great joy for all people. Weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Today we light the candle of peace, because in God's presence we find joy. Emmanuel, God with us, day spring of joy. We, re we rejoice because in Jesus we find an everlasting joy calling us into abundant life. When we were downtrodden and discouraged, you gave us a vision for the possibilities. When we were depressed and unmovable, you relieved our minds and gave us rest. And when we were apathetic and uncaring, you sent us projects to capture our imaginations. When we were escaping big feelings with big addictions, you intervened and we sobered up. When we thought we may never laugh again, the echoes of joyful praise never let us go. And for those who are discouraged and sad still, you are here among us, reminding us joy will come again. Because you have felt it all before and you know all we experience we have joy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Emmanuel, God with us, day spring of joy, we confess we confuse your joy with thrills for momentary satisfaction and for simple pleasures. But even when we have traded the profound depth of Christian joy for shallow, temporary pleasures, you are with us, beckoning us into a more substantial life. 
for we have lost our way on a path toward joy. Forgive us, God. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have left undone and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The joy of the Lord has no height, no depth, no width, no end, and God is waiting for us with joyful expectation to rejoice once again. Be pardoned, receive grace today, and be free to love yourself, your neighbors, and your God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Emmanuel, God with us, day spring of joy, as we gather at the feet of the wise, both in Scripture and in our midst, open our hearts and minds to the joy of your presence. Disciple us into a life of rejoicing, resilient to the despair in the world around us. Amen. Good evening. The first reading is from Isaiah, the 35th chapter, beginning at the first verse. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall shall there be, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing." Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Psalm, the 146th chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Please read responsibly with me. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow but frustrates the way of the wicked. 
The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord. Hello and welcome to our children's message on this third weekend in Advent. We are getting very, very close to Christmas. Today I'm going to read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 41 and 42. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby inside her jumped, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she called out, God has blessed you more than other women, and blessed is the child you will have. So Mary had been told by an angel that she would have a baby boy and his name would be Jesus. He'd be the son of the Most High God. After Mary had this overwhelming experience, she decided that she needed to go see her relative, Elizabeth. So she packed all her things and she headed out right away. Mary knew that Elizabeth had been very sad because she wanted to be a mom so badly, but she hadn't had a baby yet. Elizabeth was getting quite old and she didn't think she would ever be able to be a mom. But the angel had told Mary that Elizabeth would have a baby as well, even though Elizabeth was quite old. So Mary was going to have a baby and Elizabeth was going to have a baby and both things just seemed so incredibly impossible. How could this be? But she remembered the angel's words the night before. Gabriel the angel had said, nothing is impossible for God. So Mary arrived at Elizabeth's home and knocked on the door with excitement. Elizabeth opened the door and Mary immediately knew that the angel was right. Elizabeth was pregnant and her face filled with joy. Mary, what are you doing here? I've missed you so much. The baby inside me just jumped for joy. How wonderful to see the mother of my Lord. Mary stopped. She thought, wait, wait. Did Elizabeth just say that I am the mother of her Lord? How did Elizabeth know that Mary was going to have a baby that was God's son? The women hugged and they cried tears of joy. Both of them were so happy for one another and they couldn't believe that their answered prayers from God had happened. Now Mary knew without a doubt that the words the angel spoke to her were completely true. Every single word. God could do impossible things. Elizabeth, even though she and Zechariah were very old, was going to have a baby. Mary, even though she was very, very young, was also going to have a baby. And Mary's own son would be God's only son. Mary and Elizabeth felt that kind of joy that just overwhelms your heart and your mind and your soul. You know, like when you just feel like you're gonna burst. They could not stop smiling. They could not stop praising God. They could not believe how God had blessed them. And they didn't even realize the amount of joy that their babies would bring for years to come. Elizabeth's son, John the Baptist, would baptize Jesus Christ, Mary's son. Their sons would bring endless joy to the world for years to come. God does impossible things, and we often are blessed with the joy of experiencing or witnessing those moments in our lives and in the lives of others. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for giving us relatives and friends to share our joy with just as Mary shared her joy with Elizabeth. Help us to remember the joy you have given us through the birth of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. As we continue to prepare for the celebration of Christmas, remind us that you bless us with hope, with peace, and with joy each and every day of our lives. We just have to remember to look for it. In your holy name we pray, amen. Okay, that is it for today's children's message. I'm so glad that you could join me. I hope that you're having a wonderful Advent season preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus. 
Take care, stay warm, and I hope I get to see you soon. Bye-bye. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. When John heard in prison what Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with skin disease are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken in the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal places, palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Our Gospel lesson centers on John the Baptist and the disillusionment that he's feeling about the work of Jesus. John expected Judgment Day, separating the wheat from the chaff, but Jesus is out showing compassion for the poor and the sick and the downtrodden. He asked this question directly to Jesus. Now, from the time I reread our gospel lesson, I knew exactly what emphasis and meaning I wanted to bring to you this evening. And I had my sermon almost written. Then I came across a sermon written by Leonard Van Zee. And I found it helpful to borrow some of his content in this sermon. Now, let's go to the gospel lesson. Are you the one to come, or are we to wait for someone else? That just has to be the most haunting question in in the Bible. And look who's asking it. John the Baptist, whom we have heard from last week in Matthew chapter 3, that tough seasoned prophet who preached repentance. John the Baptist who stood up to the Pharisees and Sadducees out there in the hot desert sun. John the Baptist who declared Jesus the Messiah, whose sandals he was unworthy to carry. John the Baptist who waited waist deep in water and baptized Jesus as he heard the voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. And you'd think that John, of all people, would understand Jesus sent by God. So what happened? What made him question the identity of the one man who he had been waiting for all his life? Well, Prison, for one thing. John was in jail. There's nothing like getting locked up to turn down your heat of enthusiasm. Fearless in his righteous indignation, he was locked up for attacking the political establishment. John thought he knew what the Messiah was going to do. Messiah was supposed to revamp the political and religious landscape In Matthew 3, it already outlined the Messiah's campaign theme. God's wrath is coming. The axe is laid at the root of the tree. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. 
His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into his grain rake. But the chaff he will burn in unquenchable fire. That's the kind of Messiah John envisioned. He separates the good guys from the bad guys once and for all. Jesus, the Messiah, was supposed to come out all fire and brimstone, but he seemed to come out more for peace, love, reconciliation. Jesus' ministry consists in going around healing people here and there, mostly in the small towns of Galilee. He seems to spend a lot of time with misfits and spiritual losers, whining and dining with sinners. But the judgment separating evildoers and the righteous people doesn't seem to be happening. Nothing seems to really change. It's all a big disappointment for John. He begins to doubt whether he had it right after all. Maybe God had someone else in mind for the Messiah. He has a sinking feeling of abandonment. The fear of having made a terrible mistake creeps into his mind. His question is difficult. Stomach churning. Are you the one? Or are we to wait for, the, uh, for another? It's a tough question. But we can all be glad that this question, so full of heartbreak and doubt, is found in the pages of Scripture. It's a, and it's asked by the one who Jesus called the greatest prophet yet. John voices his deepest doubts, and Jesus answers them. First, Jesus describes what he's doing, saying, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. Don't misunderstand what Jesus is saying here. He's not angry at John or reprimanding him for his doubts. In Jesus' answer to John, he is showing him what is important to God, which is for us to love our neighbor and Judgment Day will have to wait. This is not what John expected, and Jesus understood that. And that's why Jesus ends his reply to John with a message tailor-made for him, and for all of us who are tempted to wonder sometimes whether Jesus is really the one. Jesus says, And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. At some point in our lives, we find ourselves with a similar question. Is Jesus the one? Is it all right to ask a question like that? A very in-your-face, direct question of Jesus himself. Doesn't it betray a lack of confidence? A failure of faith? No. No. Jesus did not object to the question. He answered it. John was right to ask. When doubts arise in our lives, we need to take them directly to God in prayer. Sometimes, like John, we wonder if the crucified Jesus is the one. We thought maybe we'd make our lives easy but he calls us to live more deeply. We thought he'd erase our suffering, but we discovered him next to us in our pain. We thought he'd put us on top, but he tells us to identify those on the bottom. We thought he'd make us strong, but he calls us to learn strength from our weakness. We thought he'd destroy our enemies, but he asks us to love them. We thought he'd make us leaders, but he invites us to be servants. So now, once more, 
we make our yearly pilgrimage to Bethlehem. We peer into that most unlikely place, a stable. And what do we see? A helpless baby wrapped in rags and lying in a manger. And we might very well ask, are you the one or should we wait for another? Or do we say, here is our God, Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Morn, number 242, and let's sing two verses. Recite the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for New hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your Spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and ELCA Global Mission. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. Revive lands we have squandered and depleted. Make gardens flourish in cities and neighborhoods. Cleanse polluted air and water so living things may breathe, drink, and praise you. God, in your mercy. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice. End racism and oppression, deliver all who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted, 
reconcile nations and peoples in conflict. Help us pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, or loss. Strengthen and protect health care workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those for whom this season is not happy. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, mother of our Lord, and with all the saints that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have died and lead us to joyfully sing of your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, when we gather, God is with us. When God is with us, joy dwells among us. Speak a word of peace to your neighbor, to your family members, to a stranger. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Uh, May we greet each other at this time. At this time, can we have the uh, offering brought forward? Throughout this worship experience, the message has become clearer and clearer. We thank our parish ministry associate for his strong words of gospel tonight. And I know he's anxious to pray for the blessings of this offering time. But throughout this service, the good news is that in the darkest time of year, when we might feel like John the Baptist ourselves, when our eyes can't see and we just can't seem to find the words or our legs are under us and are shaky, that God is with us. God is with us. And in this meal, it doesn't depend on us. We come in faith to celebrate the joy of God with us through this bread and wine. So let us prepare our hearts for this communion time, beginning with the prayer of thanksgiving, the prayer blessing our offering. Offering prayer, prayer, offering prayer. Emmanuel, God with us, day spring of joy. We approach the time of offering as cheerful givers. Our heads are lifted and our hearts are full because we do not give out 
of coercion or guilt, but in confident joy that you will continue to provide for us and for our community. Amen. Do you hear what I hear? Listen for the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. God is with us. He's with you. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, as you are with us, teach us again to pray the prayer you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, the table is prepared for you. We'll begin with the distribution on this side of the congregation, come up the center aisle and down the side. The cups may be distributed or placed in the basket when you're finished. And then we'll go to this side of the congregation likewise in a similar fashion.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, now strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Almighty God, we give you thanks that in this time of fellowship and meal, you are with us, that your strength comes from heaven when we are at our weakest to bolster us and to carry us and to bring us joy and hope anew. Bless us and all of your people in this holy season. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Siblings in Christ, let us proclaim the joy of our faith. When we thought we had lost everything, that we would never be joyful again, God was with us, and God never gave up. When he couldn't exercise enough, socialize enough, or eat healthy enough to feel better, God was with us, with us and, and God, God accepted, accepted our condition. condition. When we lost loved ones and could not imagine joy without their presence with us every day, God was with us and God collected all all our our tears. tears. When we drifted away to shallow thrills and easy bumps of breezy feelings, God God was was with with us, us, drawing drawing our gaze to a better way to meaningful meaningful joy. joy. And when we forget the good news of great joy for all people, Proclaimed long ago, God God is is with with us, us, calling calling us us back back to to Christmas. Christmas. This This is is the the joy joy of our faith. Now, I don't have any announcements that I'm aware of. Is is there anything to be... have a very important person for come forward here. <laughs> Hi, good evening. I'm Tracy Gross, your council president, and I do have some exciting news to talk about tonight. Um, I'm here to give an update on the transitional minister, and we have one. Yay, I, yay exactly. Um, his name is Pastor Glenn Thomas. And for the past 15 years, he's been uh, the senior pastor down at St. Matthew's Church in Midtown Omaha. Um, He was born in Fremont, actually, and um, he says he's a Husker. He's been a Husker all of his life. And uh, he served in four churches, St. Matthew's being the most recent. And um, he made the decision to move into transitional ministry, Um, thank goodness. Um, Juliet said, I have just the church for you. Um, So members of council, along with staff, met with him not too long ago, um, had a fantastic meeting. He is super down to earth. He um, uh, is a student of the Bible, and he is just um, a great guy and so easy to talk to, and, and, and we're all just very excited about taking this next step for our church. So, um... He is wrapping things up with his church, and um, his first day will be uh, Monday, um, January 2nd. So the first time that he'll be in the pulpit will be that Saturday and and Sunday, the 7th and 8th weekend. So mark your calendars. Thank you. Tracy, thank you. (laughs) You've been stalwart in your faith and leadership through these days, and just think, God has provided. Good job. Thank you, Joel. And then I lost my space place here. Um, friends of God and pilgrims along the journey of faith, make space for joy alongside any grief or sadness you may feel this season. Make space for joy alongside any grief or sadness you may feel this season. Journey in, on in boldness for the joy and the incarnated G. Christ does not leave our side. May you go forth in the confidence of God is with you so that your family of, of faith. Amen. Our sending song is Joy to the World 
and four service, four, four, four verses, yeah. Joy to the world, uh, number 267. Peace, Christ is near. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.